I'm at an Airbnb. I'm gonna give you five ways that you're gonna promote your new photo studio in 2023 and beyond. And I'm going off of my own experiences. So I've had this 5,000 square foot studio that you may or may not have heard me talk about. If there's one thing that really benefited my studio in the beginning was having these Instagrammable moments. Now we can say Instagram or TikTok or whatever, but I call them Instagrammable moments because what they were doing is that they were advertising my studio in a way that I didn't have to pay for. And I I was tapping into every single person's network, but not just every single person, people that came to see my studio. So photographers have other photographers who are their friends, makeup artists, models, talent, producers, everybody. So what I did in my studios have two big Instagrammable moments. Number one is in my hair and makeup room shared with the wardrobe room at Five Point Studio in LA. I had a wall that was Kate Moss and Madonna. Two people and two people only, but it was such a hot spot and it really brought a lot of clients into my studio. Madonna is probably what, 30, 40 years into her career and she's the blueprint. People are gonna disagree, but she's the blueprint. Michael Jackson's the other blueprint. And then Kate Moss, is one of the blueprints of the modeling world. But here's what's really cool about the both of them is that they're both working and they're not relying on old photos or anything like that. They're both creating new work. So they're current and they're vintage because they've have so many years under their belts. But then on top of that, here's the other perk of it too, is that if this was in the hair and makeup room, then imagine a hairstylist going to a model or an actress and saying, Look, when I do this kind of an eyeliner on you, it's gonna give you this kind of a shape. See, you can see Madonna's right here, and then you can see what when she didn't have it here. Because the same face, we get to see different eras, and it was really impactful. But also, every single person that walked through there thought something about that wall and they took a photo in front of it. I had music videos film against that. I had, you name it, I had so many different people photographing against that. You can actually see a photo of me just sitting on the ground on like my last week there before I sold it. When you take a photo in front of it, all your friends see it. And of course you're gonna tag it, right? Because in LA especially, or any really anywhere, people want to show their finds. They wanna be like, oh, look what I found. They want to be the first ones. So I had a whole lot of people tagging my studio. Because of that, I got inquiries. Because of that, I got, I got Instagram ads. Because of the Instagram ads, I got DMs and I got bookings. The second one that I had is a police lineup. I directed a music video for a boy band, oddly enough, co-owned by Simon Fuller, Perez Hilton, and Jamie King. This boy band, I Am Five, great, talented guys, nice humans, I directed their music video here. I had a scene when a music video called Heartless and I had a scene where they were lining up against this wall. I had my art department person do that and then I said, please leave it, don't take it out. That became the spot where everybody stood in front of it. It was almost like a police lineup, like a mug shot. The amount of people that use that on their ads, use that on their social media, brought me so much attention. Those two things cost me like very, very little. They brought in more than any Instagram ad, they brought in more than any type of a peer space, anything. Now let's go into the second idea for promoting your studio. So I would say the second one, invite photographers that may not be able to afford your studio. And so they're starting out, they may have just picked up the camera, they may not have learned how to make money yet. By the way, if you are looking to make money from photography, my step pricing course is like the best course out there. Uh, it is my roadmap from starting in weddings to shooting major, major superstars and magazines and global brands. It's all the same thing. So if you're interested in that, that's linked down below. Now let's go into again, the photographers that may not be able to afford your studio. And they will in the future. And they will more than anything else that's more guaranteed than making money, they're gonna remember who was loyal to them. Produce a day, out of the week and speak with your lawyer, make sure that the laws in your local area will fit this, but have a day where people can come in and there'll be models there, there'll be makeup artists, there'll be hairstylists there, there'll be people that have wardrobe, and there's, it's almost like a, like a group meeting where everyone just comes in, they're like, hey, are you free? I'd love to shoot you. Hey, would you be able to do some makeup over here? Everybody 
is sharing images. Everybody is sharing their talent, whatever it might be. And then they're coming in together. And number one, they're gonna be networking. You are the reason why they've met each other. You're the reason why they got together and you're the reason why they have those images. They're not going to forget that. And that's gonna be their home base. Let's go to point number three. Mysterious point number three, because you can't see my face unless it's from a side angle. Very, very simple. Have a bulletin board. A bulletin board of local artists that whatever they offer, their business cards, their flyers, have a space for the community. I'll tell you why. Number one, it's just good karma. People are going to go and be able to promote themselves for free and it's gonna be in your business. Number two, it's a place that everybody that is bored on set and everybody will be bored on set at some point is going to stop and they're gonna read and they're gonna take photos of a business card and they're gonna contact somebody. So it's incredible karma where you're going to be helping your community. Number two, it's a space where people are gonna go and connect to and they're gonna ask you for permission to put up their their own business cards or their own business information. That right there builds your network of people. And the third part of it is that they're gonna have to keep coming back to you. They're gonna come back to you because they have to refill it. They're gonna come back to you because they're gonna remember seeing something that somebody offers and they're gonna come back to you. The more people that come into your studio, the more you start booking, the more they bring a friend with them, the more you build a relationship with them, the better you serve your community. And that, when you serve your community, your community is going to serve you right back and support your studio. So that would be the third way that you can promote your studio for free and it's highly effective and I've done it. Number four. Go outside, go outside of Peerspace or Gigster, go outside of your Instagram, go into companies that, funny enough, this was the first location companies. These are just location companies like Planet Locations I was listed with, a whole bunch of them, and I can even list them in the description of this video. What they do is they have almost like a catalog and they serve you much better than a peer space or a gigster. So a gigster peer space is almost like an Airbnb, like what I've rented out here. But a location company, they have criteria. They're gonna negotiate on your behalf. Negotiate on your behalf. A peer space does not negotiate. So like a peer space already has your hourly rate and they know what your cleanup amount would be and they know what the service fee would be and they say okay you can have this whole vast land here this location this home for let's say uh, $1,350 there is no negotiation there is no back and forth there is no asking you if that's okay where you go with a location company they will book your location for you and they make a commission off of you so the more that they charge the more that they make but they also ask you too. Well, I used to always get these questions like, hey, Wally, there's gonna be a commercial for Samsung and they're looking for a location that's gonna be a two-day shoot. It's gonna be about 50 to 75 people and it's gonna be $13,000 all in. I would say, yeah, but for that many people, high amount of traffic. I moved to it like a sl <laughs> slightly less windy, more dangerous location. But what they might say is, hey Walid, Samsung commercial is gonna be this large amount of people, 50 to 75 people, it's gonna be two days. They're gonna be looking at filming on your roof inside the location and they're gonna need a whole list of everything. Then they tell me it is $13,000 all in. I'm gonna tell them, hey, you guys, and I've always dealt with this and I've always gotten an increase of a price. You know, that's a certain amount of traffic that's coming into my studio. I think that we could do something for 15,000 all in and then also overtime and then also a studio manager fee. These location companies are still there. The peer spaces and the gigsters and the likes of these companies that are kind of like the Airbnb of studios, they're not going to tell you all that information. They are more of the Walmart, like quick churn and burn, like a conveyor belt. You can actually sign up with these location companies and they give a level of service to you and to the production. Now let's go into the last way I've promoted 
my studio and it's worked out very, very well. A meeting place. A lot of people don't have meeting places. There's a lot of coffee shops and restaurants that are serving as meeting places for humans, but where do you find these humans? There's a website called meetup.com. You're gonna find people that love hiking and they, and it might be just like, hey, look, Joshua Tree hiking group. There might be people that just wanna learn how to meal prep and there might be people that love photography. They need a space. Now they usually go to coffee shops, cafes, some kind of restaurants, maybe even a bar. The thing with that is you can only do that for so often. You can only buy so much food from them. You could only be so loud. You could only speak so much because there are other patrons in this location that you're visiting. The ideal situation would be a place that they could visit and hang out alone. What the right answer would be is your studio. And when you do that, when you have your own studio, it starts feeding itself because people are very appreciative of it. And every time somebody brings somebody to you, they're somebody's find out about your studio and they find out how cool you are. And I have a bonus for you too, of uh, one more tip that I think is gonna bring you a lot of money. Oh,